Man, that broke my heart. But it did something inside me, Pastor. I thought I was bold before you went to jail. I'm praising now. By the way, that just arrested another one. Just arrested another man. And so I jumped down in the cedar chips, you know, and got to kick it around. And I began to preach that day, and I talked about how, man, wouldn't it be amazing if we could get Pastor Artur to come and just share his testimony and speak to us and take an offering for him and bless his church. This is interesting. He told us the other day we were in Tampa together at this big conference. <laughs> he said they found out that they wouldn't arrest women yet, right? They're just arresting the men. So he came over to America, turned everything over to his wife, and she's running the whole homeless outreach and the whole food ministry outreach. He's Canada yeah. while he's over here. So they ain't arrested the girls yet, so he put her in charge. They knew that's why. You can't stop the kingdom of God's work. You can't stop the kingdom of God's work. So I wanna I wanna show a clip. I think that we have it here. I want to show a clip on the screens and then we're gonna have him come up and he's gonna he's gonna chit chat with us for a little bit and get us fired up. It don't take much to get our folks fired up. Amen. We, we got that clip we can roll here just for a moment. This, this is the guy we get to be privileged to have under our tent today. This honor, this guy, one of my heroes right here. See if we get that going. Out! Out of this property, you Nazis! Out! Out! The Gestapo is not allowed to. beautiful thing besides hanging around with Jesus is hanging around with the lions from the tribe of Judah I've never you do that next time I'll say get out Wow I have never seen so many lions in one place you see, the enemy wants to turn us into chickens and turkeys, but do not allow them, because if you do, you will end up on my grill. I've never cooked a lion. I've never cooked an eagle. See, those animals are peculiar animals. They are his animals. You don't touch them. And if you do, there will be a price to pay. Whoever touches the apple of God's eye, I'm telling you, God shows up and deals with them. I want you to stand up just for a second. And when we were at the conference, I've heard Americans chanting USA. But when they were doing that, I had this deep desire in my heart to chant with you, Jesus Christ. Because people ask me this simple question, what is going to take, pastor? What is going to take? What we have to do? You know, are you getting those questions all the time? What is going to take to turn this tide around? What is going to take to bring sanity back into this craziness? But you see, there is only one answer. Yesterday, today, and forever. There is one solution and one solution only. I don't know about 10 solutions. There is only one and that's Jesus Christ. So let's, let's sing it together. Let's chant together. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Wow. You can sit. It's amazing to be in the United States of America. Do you know I'm part of American? They've adopted me. I am a son of this land. I love America. I always did. Do you know that our generals, Kosciuszko, fought for this land during the independence wars? 
We have Polish ancestors, Polish people coming here to this land fighting for freedom. Freedom. Without freedom, you have nothing left. You can have all the titles on the world, on your wall. You can be the richest man on the planet Earth. But I'm telling you, you can live in that palace, but without Jesus Christ, you're just another slave. You're just another slave. When I was in jail, I was freer than the jailers. When they put the shackle on my feet, and they did, and they stripped me naked, and they threatened me, and they pushed me on a wall, and they said, are we going to have a trouble with you? I said, no, I have a, I have a trouble with you. I have a problem with you. Boom, they shoved me on the wall. That's okay. They've done it to Jesus. They've done it to the apostles. They've done it to the heroes of all. Listen to me today. You want to accomplish great things for the kingdom of God? It will cost you everything. Not just your bank account. Not just your houses. Not just your cars. Everything or nothing. Life or death. Either him or the enemy. There is nothing in between. Three years ago, God spoke to me before this craziness started. And he said... You are about to witness the greatest separation between the sheep and the goats and the sheep and the wolves. Now you will know who is who. You will know. Soon you will know who is the real shepherd. Because Jesus says there is no greater love than this. A man giving his life for his friends. Jesus did it. If we call ourselves the followers of Jesus Christ, we have to follow him all the way. He didn't say, pick up your toothpick and go to McDonald's. He said, pick up your cross daily, daily and follow me. Are we followers of Christ? If we are, the cross is part of the deal. Brother, I was riding in in a limousine a few days ago. First time in my life. Normally, a limousine for me is the police car. And I have being taken number of times and I said to God wow I now see all those hyenas going around look pastor Arthur Pulaski you know he's skimming from the top now he is going to be rich and listen to me I own nothing but with Jesus I own everything It doesn't matter what you have here. It matters what he wants you to have. Oh, I have a few things that I want to I wanna give it to you. Brother, you were talking about courage. It's fascinating how the Spirit of God works. I didn't know what you're going to talk about. And here is what I have. Quotes about courage. Is that not fascinating? When God is appointing you for such a time as this, he's giving you everything. Everything. I mean everything you need. Do you know that I had a free ride to the police station? Paid by taxpayers? Incredible. I mean, incredible. And they actually gave me a ride to the court back and forth. Incredible. Paid by my God. For such a time as this, what the enemy meant for evil, God turned around for good when I was on my knees. You see, when I fight with the hyenas and the wolves, I don't want to make their life easier. I want to make their life more difficult. So when they came to arrest me, I wasn't going to give them an easy ride. I went to my knees. I put my hands behind and I said, do it the Nazi style. Do it. You are acting like Nazis. You're talking like Nazis. Do it the Nazi style. You want to take the pastor down. You think that's cool. You think you're heroes because you got the badge and the gun. But I'm telling you, my God is bigger than your God. My God is stronger than your demons. What they thought, that they're going to put me down. Sit down, you good slave. Put a mask on. You have no identity. You have no say. That's what they wanted. But God had a different plan. God always has a different plan. The enemy is moving, but my God is always on the move. Courage is contagious. When a brave man takes a stand, the spines of others are often stiffened. 
Billy Graham. In order to fly, you have to start flapping your wings. Eagles, this is what I see today. Are you willing to fly above the storms of this craziness? You gotta start flapping those wings. Lions, you own the savannah. It's yours, that's your promised land. Do not allow the hyenas to take what's rightfully yours. Courage is being scared to death and saddling up anyway. I'm sure you know that one, John Wayne. <laughs> Only those who will risk going too far can possibly find out how far one can go. You see, when I had a vision, when my son was dying, my son was born with a heart on opposite sides, smash lines, and I went into a heavy rebellion against God. I did. I was yelling at him, why me, why me? Why is this happening to me, not to him? I had my moments of rebellion. I thought I was a Christian, but I was a lukewarm, good for nothing compromiser. You see, there is no place in the kingdom of God for compromise. He is a holy God. He is a holy God. Jesus had his moments in Gethsemane. When my son was dying, I had a vision. I saw Jesus in Gethsemane and he was afraid. Being afraid, that's a God-given gift, you know that? If you're in the middle of a highway, be afraid of the semi-truck. That's a good thing. If you climb a, a high you know, wall or roof and you see down and you have a little bit of a fear, that's a good thing. Don't jump. Please, don't do it. But what you do with that fear? And Jesus said, not my will. Not my will. You see, I said that to God. I had my moments when I wanted to quit. And God said this to me, fine. I was arrested so many times that when I left to feed the poor, by the way, I was only arrested for feeding the poor illegally, according to them, and for preaching the gospel. Over 100 court cases, 300 tickets, dozens of arrests. Now I got 29 COVID tickets, three court orders, two injunctions, and two contempt of order, and the latest arrest. And yet, I'm still preaching the gospel. Who can shut the mouth of the lions? Jesus had his moments in Gethsemane, but he answered the proper way. If it's possible, but sometimes it's not possible. Sometimes God has you for a purpose, for a specific task. He told me when I was ready to quit, he says, if you do, I will raise another. He will replace you and he will finish the job. And I was so afraid. I was terrified for the first time in my life. I faced mafia. Number of times they put price on my head. And I was never as afraid as when he said to me, I will replace you. Listen, there is no greater destiny for a man to miss his destiny. Every one of you has a destiny in Christ. He has something for you to do. And that will require courage. Jesus went all the way. All the way to the cross. Are you willing to follow him there? Sometimes you may ride in a limo. And then you have to explain yourself. Why? What are you doing there? Sometimes you have cars like I have. I still have a pickup truck that was attacked yesterday. My tires were slashed because I'm here preaching. They unscrew the bolts in my pickup truck to murder my wife and my children. And thank God that the wheel has fallen in the middle of a road when they were not driving fast. This fight is serious, but we know how the story ends. We know we win in the end. You will never do anything in this world without courage. It is the greatest quality of the mind next to honor. As pastors, as leaders, we've lost that courage. The courage of the heroes from the past, the apostles that said to the authorities, you be the judge whom we are to obey. You, you CBC or whatever you are, you governor, you lying, thieving, Fauci's and Biden's, you devils, whom we are to obey. You, you uncircumcised Philistines. 
We eat you for breakfast. We are a pride of lions. You mess with my father, you mess with the whole family. Courage is fire. I'm on fire. I wish, brother, you were not preaching today. Just kidding. And bowling is smoke. Let me read this again. Courage is fire and bowling is smoke. We see a lot of smoke around. A lot of lie, a lot of manipulation. That's what the devil does. He's a good liar, but that's it. That's where it ends. And the Bible says, in my Bible, it says liars will not inherit the kingdom of God. All those people that are doing this to you and me, they have a destiny as well. They're not going to spend eternity with my father. My father is holy. He judges liars, manipulators, and cheaters. Their time is coming. You see, listen, I am getting hungry. I'm going to start eating them alive, those hyenas, for breakfast. The opposite of courage in our society is not only cowardice, it's conformity, apathy. Lukewarm church, cowards, pastors. When the wolves came, the first thing they did, they are running away. I remember a pastor comes to me, he says, Art, they said to me, I might get a ticket. And I said, so you don't have any yet? I am absolutely shocked. I might get a ticket, seriously. A man of God is afraid of a ticket. What is going to happen when they're going to chop our heads off? Those who like the courage will always find a philosophy to justify it. Seneca said something interesting. He who is brave is free. Remember what Jesus said, who comes to me is what? Builds a mega churches, preaches prosperity gospel. Now, who comes to me is free indeed. You can be the wealthiest man on earth. I said that before. And you can be just a slave. And you can be the poorest mouth praising God, glorifying His name with nothing. Faith loves the fearless. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. Be on your guard. Stand firm in a faith. Be courageous. Be strong. We have forgotten that we are the soldiers of Christ. We are the warriors. Warriors do their duty. When the enemy comes, why God has given us a staff and a stick? He has given us for a purpose. It's not a toothpick after our big fat dinner. It's to fight. It's to protect. Psalm 31, 24, be strong and take heart, all oh, who hope in the Lord. Second Chronicles 15, 7, but you take courage. Do not let your hands be weak, for your work shall be rewarded. Joshua, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Bendigo, Mordecai, Esther, if I perish, I perish. But I will do the will of my God. Imagine, instead of coming to the church, to God, and asking for more and more and more. Give me, give me, give me, give me. I need this, I need that. Imagine if the church would come to God, go to their knees and say, Lord, what I can do for you. What I can do for you. You've done everything for me. You died on the cross. You prepared this amazing earth. You have a place in heaven for me. You're creating galaxies. The eye have not seen, the ear have not heard. The amazing things that God created for those that love Him. If you come to God, please, from time to time, come to Him and say, Lord, you've given me everything my heart desires. What is your heart desiring today? What I can give you today. How can I be useful in your kingdom? Because Jesus to this day, He says the same thing to you and me. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to all creation. Be courageous, be strong. 
Yes, the gallows are terrifying. I'm sure it was a terrifying gallows for Mordecai when Haman was nicely painting it, finishing it. Because the next day, Haman already envisioned Mordecai swinging beautifully, moving in the wind. But we know how the story ends. We know that he did all of this evil, and that's exactly your portion. The enemy have built a gallow, and the enemy is beautifully swinging on it. Because God got his glory. God always will get his glory. Even though I don't know what they're going to do to me when I come back. My wife said to me yesterday, she said, stay a little bit longer because they might hurt you. Let me take over. And that's what she did. And that's what she's doing right now. Today in the city of Calgary, my wife is leading Warriors, Lions, Eagles of Christ in the March for Jesus. We have a March for Jesus today. There is no greater name, no, nothing more powerful that can break the chains than the name of Jesus Christ. Lift him wherever you go. Never bow before the hyenas. Lions never do. Lions never do. Eagles, when there is a storm, they're so powerful, so beautiful, they can fly breaking the storms. When I was flying little planes, I remember going through the, through the clouds, and it was dark. But I'm telling you, always, when you break the clouds, the sun is always shining. God is always there cheering you up. Go for it. Go for it. Go for it. Fight! Be blessed. When, uh, when I introduced you and showed the video and you got up here, I noticed some, some tears right here and some joy right back here because uh, these are some folks from your neck of the woods, amen, and they appreciate the fact that you're standing and what you're doing over there. Give the man of God a hand again, amen, and a blessing. Wow. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, we'll get to some more worship here in just a few moments, and uh, let me just... Let me get a, a couple of the boring parts of the service out of the way because when we get to our baptismal celebrations after the message here in just a bit, everybody tries to, to get out quickly. 